Good morning class and welcome to another lecture in sustainable energy technology. In the previous few classes, we have been discussing solar thermal energy systems where sunlight was being converted into heat through a series of collectors or mirrors and that heat was, by, was being used directly either to heat water or convert water to steam for heat process applications or convert water to high pressure steam to be run through a steam turbine to generate electricity. The next and one of the most rapidly growing technologies for converting solar energy into electricity is solar photovoltaic systems or solar PVs. The solar photovoltaic systems take, uh, uh, use the semiconductor technology using silicon cells to convert solar energy directly into electricity. So today we will start our discussion on solar photovoltaic systems by first discussing its growth in the current world and the, its growth potential and then starting to look at the technology behind the solar photovoltaic system applications. Now, uh, the solar photovoltaic systems, uh, this chart gives you an idea of the rate of growth of electricity production through solar photovoltaic systems over the last two decades. As you can see, the units are in terawatt hours. The amount of electricity that was being produced in 2005 through solar PV technology was close to zero. It was non-existent. Even by 2008, the production was quite small. It was only from 2008 onwards, we see a escalating and exponential growth in electricity production to solar photovoltaic technologies. So by 2011, it has reached around 100 terawatt hours globally. Then by 2015, it reached around 300 terawatt hours. And in 2019, it has reached to around 700 terawatt hours. So from near 0 terawatt hours in 2005 to 700 terawatt hours in 2019. And if you see the growth from say around 100 terawatt hours around 2011, in just 8 years, we have seen a 7 fold increase in the electricity generation by solar photovoltaic systems. And the data is even more stark if we look earlier. In 2005, only 4 terawatt hour of electricity was being produced through solar photovoltaic systems. In 2019, this has increased to 681 terawatt hours. And the growth has going, is going up in an exponential fashion. You can also see that initially the developed world that is the Europe, USA, Japan, etc., were contributing most of the places where solar PV based electricity was being generated till around 2011 2012. From 2012 onwards, the growth in PV took off in China, shown by the yellow section, and later around 2015 2016, the non OECD Asian countries like India became an important player in solar photovoltaic electricity production. Today, India has taken the growth rate in, in India on solar photovoltaic electricity potential is very rapid. Electricity production increasing at an exponential pace from solar PV systems. This is the solar PV global capacity by country and region between 2010 and 2020. So this was the total electricity generated, electrical energy in terawatt hours. And this is the capacity of the solar cells that are currently installed. Okay. So in 2010, around 20 gigawatt of uh, uh, solar PV was installed in all. Today in 2020, this value has increased to around 750. And initially, most of the growth was in European Union. EU was one of the early adopters of solar PV technology. 
This was then followed by China and US from around 2014 onwards as well as Japan and later India has become an increasingly important player from 2017 onwards and now India contributes significantly to the global total capacity of solar PV. The reason for this growth in solar photovoltaic technology can be guessed from looking at the levelized cost of electricity and their trends between 2010 and 2020. In 2010, the levelized cost of electricity generation from solar PV was the most expensive among all potential renewable energy sources. It was $0.381 per kilowatt hour of electrical energy produced. While the concentrated solar was the next highest at $0.34 US dollars per kilowatt hour of electricity produced. You should compare this with typical fossil fuel based systems whose bands lie from $0.15 per kilowatt hour to around $0.05 per kilowatt hour. And compare this with hydro technology whose uh, electricity cost, levelized cost of electricity was 0.038 and geothermal which was around 0.049. Okay. Even onshore wind was within was quite economically viable because it lay within the band of the fossil fuel energy at 0.089 and biomass was around 0.076. But as you go on, you see that the cost of electricity generation from solar photovoltaics decreased in an exponential fashion so that by 2014 this has reached the high band limit of fossil fuel based electricity generation of around 0.15. Concentrated solar could not uh, cost did not decrease to that extent though you can see a continuously decreasing trend over the long term. So concentrated solar has grown a lot slower compared to solar photovoltaic systems. By the way, the black region is the offshore wind, which started around 0.162 and has remained relatively constant till 2415. Now it has been showing a decreasing trend to around 0.084. Whereas the solar has continued to decrease and now it is approaching the hydropower at 0.057 as being one of the most economical ways of generating electricity. Of course, today onshore wind still remains the most economical among the renewable technologies. Hydro is the next, followed by solar photovoltaics, geothermal and biomass systems. And all of these ranges are now below the traditional fossil fuel band of economic uh, uh, of pro e e uh, uh, production, levelized cost of electricity. So what you can see is the uptake in solar photovoltaic as a large scale electricity generation technology has kind of tracked with its exponentially decreasing cost and today solar photovoltaics along with many of the renewable source based electricity generations are actually cheaper than fossil fuel based electricity generation making them the go to place to go for energy generation even forgetting things like climate change, pollution impacts, etc. This is a country-wise profile because country-wise it, it is a little bit different for different places. But in all the countries, you see the solar cell uh, uh, costs, electricity generation costs from solar cells have seen the largest cost reduction among all renewable sources, which has led to its increased adoption. So with that, let us now go to a little bit more deeper into the kind of technology that on which solar photovoltaic systems are based on. So solar photovoltaics are fundamentally based on semiconductor technology. Specifically, the 
PN junction diode. So first we will discuss what semiconductors are and then we will look at the PN junction diode and how it works and see how a solar cell uses the PN junction diode to generate electricity from solar energy. So when you look at isolated atoms, the electrons in an isolated atom has discrete energy levels. So these are the electron energy levels for an isolated atom. Usually each level has two electrons, uh, not more than two electrons can be put in any level. There may be one unpaired electron at the highest level and then there will be some empty levels where no electron resides. Okay. So isolated atoms have a set of discrete energy levels. in which their electrons may reside up to two electrons per level okay in general the electrons fill the lowest available vacant energy level while the upper levels are empty. Okay. Such atoms are said to be in the ground state. Okay. Now, suppose high energy radiation like solar radiation for example is incident on this isolated atom then an electron in one of the upper field levels may absorb the energy of a photon energy of a photon E equal to H nu and move from a lower energy level to a higher energy level. Then the atom is said to be in an excited state. So for example, suppose you have these energy levels and these are filled, these two are empty. Now this electron absorbs energy of a photon of frequency nu, so the energy is h nu and this energy is just sufficient to move this electron to the next 
empty energy level this one keeping this space empty and one electron is here so then this atom is said to be in an excited state because part of its ground state uh, energy levels are partially unfilled and one of its uh, uh, non ground state energy levels has become partially filled okay so this exact mechanism is going to happen in a semiconductor diode as well the electron will be promoted from a ground state level to an uh, to a empty level above that ground state due to the absorption of solar energy however the situation is a bit different because semiconductors are not isolated atoms these are basically crystalline structures where all atoms are close together so there the energy levels are also arranged somewhat different so this is the next part that we will look into so for crystalline solids the atoms are very densely packed hence the energy level of the neighboring atoms superpose with each other to form energy bands these bands are comprised of a very large number where the number is n of the order of avogadro number 10 to the power 23 of very closely spaced energy levels that almost form a continuum of allowed energy values in which an electron can reside the solids have several such energy bands separated by band gaps which are forbidden ranges of energy okay so basically the energy levels of the neighboring atoms inter uh, interact with each other and superpose and create this kind of a closely spaced set of levels which almost form a continuous band and between these bands are forbidden gaps in which an electron cannot reside 